Hey guys, what's going on? This is The Process back again. This week, I am talking with my friend Oliver Manelez. I believe that's how you say it. I remember we were talking about it for a while. Manelez. Very, very seductive last name. Um, Oliver is a performance coach specializing in depth, speed, power for high achievers. I'm reading that directly off of his website. Uh, which is olivermanalese.com. He uh, he's pretty pretty uh, pretty amazing, if I say so myself. We met at there was some gather. Oh oh, it was like a speaking competition. Maybe it was speaker slam. I forget. But there was a competition. Our friend. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure who he was there to see. I was there to see my friend Brian speak. Um, didn't get to see Brian speak, but. Brian was handing out free hugs and stickers, and uh, Oliver came up to get one. And he was like, you guys giving out free hugs? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm like, I'm not, but here you go. And we, we hugged, and we talked, and we talked about our podcasts, and we talked about our life, and we talked about performance and high achieving and this and that. And uh, we, we stayed in contact, added each other on uh, Instagram, kept seeing his content he kept seeing mine and uh, eventually we were just like you know what let's uh let's make something happen and uh we did we sat down had a conversation he was nice enough to come all the way from oakville um which is like for him that must have been like an hour drive maybe hour and a half and uh yeah very grateful for that thank you so much oliver we had a conversation about all sorts of things Again, um, like I said, for the next few weeks, we're talking about like success and and achievement and this and that. And that's kind of what we talked about. We talked about why people want more out of life and out of whatever profession they're going after. You know, like what makes a high achiever want to achieve so highly. So um, it was a really, really cool conversation to have. He knows so much and his story is really cool of how he became a performance coach because most performance coaches, they have the story of they came fresh out of school, 20 years old, 21 years old, and all of a sudden now they're like a performance coach because like they've listened to like all the performance coaches and like got like a cert and now they're telling people how to get through life. Oliver is not one of those guys. He's actually built something very, very successful and he stepped away from that in order to do this, so definitely worth listening to um if you've listened this far please please take a listen to this interview with the great and powerful little throw to to the podfather joe rogan there the great and powerful oliver manalays you are now listening to the process with colin cummings that's my intro song right now. You, you like that? That's that's it. That's all I got. Recording. All right. Is this like? Is this good range? Like, is this a good spot for the? For... Is this recording? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. It's not live. Okay. <clears throat> Should I hit it live? If you want, yeah. Are we up? Are we going? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. We're good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Let me just introduce it quickly. Wow. Look at you. Hey, I am here with the amazing Colin, Colin Cummings, and very excited to be on his podcast, Colin's Process. Make sure to check it out on iTunes. Where where else are you at now? You're on YouTube. Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and that's it so far. And Spotify coming up soon. Yeah, now that you've told me, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) So very excited to be uh, in this conversation with Colin and uh, wanted to share with you a little bit about the with the of the interview so you can get a s- snapshot of what uh, the conversation can be about but make sure to subscribe to Colin's show when uh, so you can get the the full episode and all the great interviews he's had uh, so far so and that's it I'm gonna get him to open up you guys have been hearing him interview people I'm gonna get him to open up a little bit oh <laughs> okay now my I wasn't nervous until now <laughs> I don't even know what to expect <laughs> neither do I that's that's the best part of it, right? <laughs> I can actually check my heart rate now that I have this watch. I've been, uh, I've been running around. I have been wearing this for like a week now. What kind of watch is it? 
it's called a it's forerunner garmin a garmin forerunner 225 and uh i wish i wish i was i wish this podcast was big enough that that was an ad placement but like we're just like two regular guys just talking about stuff because <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like it's like it's a garmin 225 they just got plugged yeah right right <laughs> i'll try to turn that whole uh, running thing into like an ad uh sponsorship one day yeah hopefully we'll see what happens we'll see what shirts you're wearing and what yeah what gadgets and gadgets you're gonna be rocking yeah exactly <laughs> hopefully i can get new shoes my shoes are like worn out what kind of shoes are you using Let's see some nike they're running shoes but they're like these nike running shoes i've had for like five years i really like um the, the new balance ones that i have i don't run but i use it for the gym yeah and i was looking for what's the simplest lightest and flattest shoe like like no elevation in the heel which is what i need yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's the minimalist really or minimus new balance minimus i actually have to go to running room and run in front of them and then they're gonna tell me what kind of shoe i'm supposed to have yeah that's what they do apparently you're a committed runner yeah like you got to do the custom yeah I do. tailored yeah advice is good yeah because apparently it, like it'll be easier on the knees right we yeah just talking about that i should probably intro you too you know what i need you to say your last name i need you to say that please so that's a very interesting conversation <laughs> because yeah. you know and i've been kind of going back and forth with my last name and how it's actually pronounced you've been going back and forth with yeah because um you know i remember when i was in university I left a message for a friend of mine who's known me since I was four years old. Yeah. He left, sorry, no, he left a voicemail for me. And uh, I'm checking my voicemail and he's just like, hey, Oliver, when the F did you change your last name? I'm like, <laughs> what are you, ta- what are you talking about? And then he's like, it's like, I swear your pronunciation of your last name was different. Like the whole time I've known you. And then your voicemail is just completely, it's not, it's not what it was. And I was just like, yeah, you're right. You're right. So my last name, if you talk to anyone um, especially my dad or anyone uh, in in the Philippines with my last name, which is not not many people, is pronounced Manalese. Manalese. And then, you know, things change, right? Pronunciations change. But yeah. my mom got a job. This is the story that I know. My mom got a job here, and uh, they just pronounced her name Manalese, ah. which is one less syllable and not pronounced at all similar at all. Manalese, Manalese. Because you you did say Manalese when we met. Uh, I feel I feel like you did say I that. always do. Oh, I have for, I mean, m- maybe I guess since high school. It's just I just when I was younger I must have not, and then at some point I must have just went along with Manalise. It's just easier for people, um, <laughs> you know. And, and my my fiance is just like I like Manalese better. It just oh, sounds yeah. so much sexier. I'm yeah. like, well, what am I gonna do? Like, I just, you're listening to the Oliver Manalise show. You're listening to the Oliver Manalese show. Oh man, I think you should do that. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I like that. But a lot. it's but it's it's either way. I, either way, it's the same thing. So tomato tomato kind of thing. Man, I'm going. I'm going for it. I'm going. This is Oliver Manalese. I like that. That's nice, man. You should go with that. <laughs> Believe me, when you have a name like Cummings, like it's just like you, you gotta you, you gotta hold on to that. That's that's nice. But that's it's nice. it's clear and concise and. No one can really confuse it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can we can say that. That's definitely. Well, uh, I find people people like saying it for for other reasons the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, it sounds exactly like like it sounds. It's spelled exactly like it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so let's get into you and what you do. Um I want to I want to kind of call you a high performance coach, but like, what would you categorize yourself as? I'd say I'm a coach. I'm a teacher. I'm a guide in a lot of ways. It's very tough to to put a title on some of the things that I do do with the, my clients and, and and the work that I do. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in that broad in the broad category of life coach, uh, performance coach, I would say I would probably fall under. Cool under that umbrella. That's perfect. Yeah. It actually, when I say that's perfect, I mean it because um, that was the first category of people that I wanted to interview. When I decided to switch from creativity into like mindset and habits and behaviors, I just started searching high performance coaches, life coaches, like all sorts of different coaches. And uh, I couldn't find any really like I couldn't find any to get in touch with. So I started adding people on Facebook and I started going about it that way. And I found a lot since then. But like uh, 
the way we met was more organic. We hugged the first time. I didn't even know you. <laughs> we were getting these tattoos yeah. that are supposed to uh, have the vibrance, the the, vi- the vibration of love in yes. these little temporary tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I just went to that booth because someone said, hey, go over there. They give great hugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you were there. I'm like, hey, man, I hear they give great hugs in this corner. Let's uh, <laughs> let's hug it out. We don't even know each other. Right? That's, yeah. that's how we met. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is good. Which is good. And then... Um, yeah, and then also I figured out you had a podcast, and then when you said you were like a coach, I was like, oh my gosh, wow! And um, it's crazy because it's like going through the whole range of feelings again. Because like when I first started doing this, I wanted to meet real creatives because I didn't think I was one, and um, and then also I met like a real artist, like the guy who actually painted that picture, Chris Perez, and he was uh, up for doing an interview, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. And, I finally got to talk to a real creative. So now it's like the same thing. I finally get to talk to an actual coach. And uh, yeah, it feels good. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Um, so let's go into it. Um, for everybody who doesn't know, I mean, we touched on it a little bit in our conversation that we had. Um, but I would love to just go over it again of how you got into coaching. Um, because it was actually a really cool story. It was kind of like a real jump in kind of thing. Yeah. You told me about it. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> like really, I mean, there's so many ways to get at it, but I, I guess to, to make it very just clear, it's, I got into business for myself at a very early age. And that was the aim. Um, especially when I was, when I became just more self-aware and knew myself a little bit more when I was around 17, 18 years old, I'd say, I just realized that, no, this is the direction I want to be. I want to be an entrepreneur. And along that path, there was teachers, there was mentors, there were coaches. And when I started my first business, I just knew that my own personal development and personal growth would have a direct impact on the growth of my business, the growth of the growth of my success. So I've always um, found inspiration and empowerment from having uh, outside individuals uh, look into my life and be a, a source of guidance and I've hired coaches for myself and I just found it to be incredibly valuable. But the the business that I had started, uh, it was in the real estate business. We were investing in real estate and we were doing very well for a time. And it just, it turned into a very kind of mechanical process that kind of, that the passion was sucked out of it for me. You talk about being a real creative, a real artist. I I identify as I create, I make things. I'm an artist. And it didn't feel like artistry anymore. It felt like you just got to do more. You got to do better. You got to be different. Like it's just this constant um, level of more deals, more money, more partners, more properties. And I just got a little bit jaded from it and it just i started to lose my energy and my inspiration and uh, because of the space that i was i was in i was able to kind of pause and reflect Mm -hmm. i just realized that there was no authentic there was no longer any authenticity in the work that i was doing and i'm not the type of person to continue something if i know it's inauthentic to, if it's a lie yeah. um so within a short period of time after three or f- three years in business and and many years working on getting to the point where we got to from 18 years old to about 26 27 years old this was my path like i was accelerating towards this path and i was right where i was supposed to be yeah. from my original plans and i vaporized everything that it was that i was i closed down the company um, I had to rediscover myself, reinvent myself. I went through a very dark and challenging time. Mm. Um, and I, and because of the process of putting myself back together and then using some of the, the insights and the tools that I've gained over the years from my coaches and my teachers, I found, I found that, you know what, other people are going through these types of situations where, where they want to reinvent themselves, where they want to pursue more meaning in their lives, where they want to live a life where they feel like they can actually make a difference in this world. Mm-hmm. And there, I, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to support other people to do this as well. Um, I had some experience mentoring people in the real estate business before okay. I officially started um, coaching in this in this capacity so there was kind of that like 
I was leaning in that direction already. Yeah. But yeah, once I went through my own kind of rock bottom and just losing my sense of self and identity and trying to rediscover who am I and what am I here to accomplish and share with the world, um, that's kind of when I when I just I began to own it. I began to own it more. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, let's talk more about that rock bottom, if that's okay with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did, like, uh, what was that like? Uh, I always have a question for people. I always ask them what the, the dark, darkest time in their life was. And you're talking about hitting the rock bottom. So I assume it's kind of aligned there. Um, what were you actually going through? And mm-hmm. How did you come up from it, rise up from it? Yeah. So um, the business that we were in, we were getting a lot of traction. Uh, it took a long time to be uh, more well known and established in people's eyes. Of and. When we finally started getting some of that awareness around our brand and who we were, um, we just started to gather a lot of attention. And so, uh, unfortunately, it got the attention of like a certain certain authority figures. I was a real estate agent, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a governing body called the Real Estate Council of Ontario, and they saw what I was doing and they didn't like what I was doing, and they 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 filed several complaints against me on what I was doing. And for me, I'm just like, you know what? I'm like, I, I'm so transparent. I literally, we wrote blogs and made videos and taught courses about exactly what we do. Um, they they saw something that they were concerned about and they like kind of went after me. And I said, wow. you know what? If you think I'm doing something wrong, and this is very, this was 2011 when this when this happened. Okay. And um I'm not a fan of, of, of being the, at, you know, on the other end of an authority figure, yeah. like fearful of it. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me pause my business. If you think I'm doing something wrong, let me fix it. So I paused the business and they never, ever found anything. Just to be very clear, they never found anything. Mm. The complaints were never, you know, turned into a charge. I yeah. never paid anything. There was nothing wrong with what we were doing. Um, and people, and, and, but it was a blessing because it had me, uh, stop and reflect and question all this momentum from 18 years old to 26 years old. Mm-hmm. I had to put it to a halt and just kind of question. And so I, you know, I, I gave email correspondence, paperwork, documents, sh- everything that they wanted. Yeah. Right. It was like, I, di- I, it was like, I got audited. Right. And, um, during that process, it kind of had me remember, like remind myself that for about six to 12 months, I kept trying to like revive my, inspiration for the business my Mm -hmm. passion for the business and i didn't get i didn't really i wasn't aware that there was something happening behind the scenes that that was inauthentic all i knew was there's something missing and i gotta you know rejuvenate myself yeah and i would for like a week or two after a course or a book or a training or something like that and then it would kind of dwindle i'm just like why am i not performing the way i used to why am i not growing and creating like i used to but because of this space i'm just like something is like missing here like this is not there's there's something going on and i did i couldn't put my finger on it so and me so remember business has stopped now i'm, I'm still spending money of course I'm going <laughs> into credit yeah. spending that um like i'm going deeper and deeper into the negative and I do a psilocybin trip. So I don't I don't think I've ever talked about this. No, eh? Um, so I, I took, I went on a solo psilocybin psychedelic journey, which I've had experiences of in the, in the past, but never in this intentional, uh, more medicinal, insightful way. Yeah. So I did a lot of homework, a lot of research of how other people have approached it. And so I, I was very careful with how I structured the environment that I, I knew a couple things were very clear. I'm going to fast for the whole day. Yes. Like, right? And I'm going like no caffeine, no meat, no sugar, just all plant based for the whole day. And I'm going to do it at l- late at night, 11 o'clock, midnight. And I'm going to do it when it's when it's starting to rise up in its peak. I'm going to be in the darkness of my room, pitch black. Cuz usually you're stimulated visually, environmentally, sound-wise, and um they they call it set and setting. So it's very yeah. important to have to have a warm and welcoming inviting otherwise you know you could be stimulated in a way that might agitate you I'll, you're already agitated anyways Definitely. so i'm just like the set and setting will be me and my soul and my mind and that's it i don't want any external i don't i only want to go inwards 
And as I went deep into that experience, which was one of the most profound uh, moments of my life, I would say, um, it was almost like I was able to experience what would happen if everything that was associated with I or me or mine just vanished. And I was still okay. Mm. It was like an ego death moment. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hard to put into words. Um, It was because it was definitely just an experience of what would it mean? What what would it mean for everything that I thought I am, thought I was to just die and just wither away? Mm. And I was like, okay. And then maybe within a few days after that, I was just journaling and I was still not, I didn't make any decisions, but I was just journaling one day. And then one day I wrote down just how dark I was and like how broken I felt and how awful, like I just dumped it all out on, on, on my, in my journal. And I wrote down, oh my God, maybe I just don't give a shit about my company anymore. Hmm. And after I said that, I got this huge wave of sensation through my body, like a tingling vibration through my whole body. And then I, I remember even in the journal entry, it says like, like I need to pause for a second because something about saying that it's like, you know, for the people who are listening, there must've been a moment in your life where you say something and you're like, wow, I've never let myself admit that even to myself. I've never even let myself think that Mm. like it's a thought that you don't even let yourself think. Cause once it's out, yeah, you can't do any, you can't do anything, but see it. Yeah, Yeah. And so once I admitted that to myself, it literally was maybe a week or two weeks. You know, I talked to my business partner, um, didn't want to take over the company. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're going to, we're closing it down. I talked to our investors. I talked to all the people involved. Um, and we, and I just started stopping everything, stopping everything. And this was like, we were already, you know, the, the complaint was lifted. We were clear. And we even made an announcement like a month before this happened. We even made an announcement. We're back. Like, we're back. We're good. Yeah. Um, and then a month later, I'm like, we're not. Like, we're done. <laughs> and then so that's not the rock bottom. <laughs> wow. Because it was a relief. And it was gone. And then the rock bottom, the, the spiraling and the going down began to happen afterwards. Because now it was like, okay. You know, so I always tell clients, if you want to be authentic, you have to be authentic about your inauthenticities. Mm. You have to go straight to where am I being inauthentic and look at that and work with that. And so this was inauthentic. So I aimed at that and I worked on that and I completed it. And then what was left? I don't know. Just space. What yeah. What the, what the hell, right? Like, what am I going to do now? And I realized that um, there's no way I'm going to create anything new or do anything new Mm -hmm. career-wise purpose-wise professional-wise unless this thing inside of me the compass inside of me was clear yeah like had a direction and so because that took such a long time it just went down because i was just like literally wandering you know walking outside sleeping in in my bed (laughs) not wanting to be seen by people eating the worst of anything like I, I used to at that point like I pride my my prided myself on like eating very healthy, eating very clean, taking mm-hmm. care of my body, um, be, being very positive, and um, I I end, I've, I definitely kept that up. No one thought I was going through anything. I could wow. I could keep the mask on because I have enough validation from the past. Like yeah, Oliver's a upli- he's a positive guy, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I hid behind that and I kind of carried that on my own. And so the rock bottom was. My phone being canceled constantly, disconnected. Yeah. My car running out of gas constantly. Mm-hmm. Creditors calling me constantly. Yeah. Until they couldn't because my phone got canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And just feeling completely alone, like no one can relate to what I'm going through. Wow. And that was like the that was the rock bottom. Jeez. Wow. That's so hard to believe about you. <laughs> when i see you now that's crazy but i've been there so like i definitely know that it's possible i'm actually like still i'm like at that point my phone hasn't got canceled though so they can still call <laughs> <laughs> but wow man that's crazy so like that's where you hit it and then how did you how did you rise up from that 
you know, and this is when I started to kind of like just find find opportunities where I can just have a little bit of an escape. And that to me that is the escape was yoga, okay. practicing yoga. Um, and I would practice every day at this yoga studio, hot yoga. And I remember like every time I'd be lying down before the class starts and my teacher would open up the class, like begin to deepen your breath. And I was like, oh, my whole body would just, just surrender. And I would yeah. feel like everything was lifted. And then the class would be over and I would shower and get back into my car, turn back my phone on. And what was I reminded by? Yeah. What started flooding back in? The fucking hell that I was in. Yeah. And so it was a momentary escape, but that's the only thing that I committed to every day. Like sleep, food, anything like health, reading, learning, growing. None of that. I didn't care about anything. Like it was just, I'm just I'm, I was just, I was depressed and I was sad and I was grieving. But all I had was this yoga practice. Yeah. And so one day I go to this class. And there was something that was different because this was like weeks and weeks and weeks now. And I felt like uh, just tears started to come out and this lightness started to happen. And I realized that this is the sensation of joy. I'm like, this is like true joy. And like, and I'm sure you can relate. People who are listening can relate experiencing that. Like you're just dying laughing, even though you're in the middle of hell around you. Yeah. Right. Like life is fucking miserable around you. And you just like, oh, my God, this is insane. Like what? Like you're just kind of accepting it in a way. And it's so beautiful because mm -hmm. like for me at that at mo that moment, I was just like, oh, my gosh, like joy is still available even in the darkest of times. Mm -hmm. And I was I was reminded that there's a distinction between me and my circumstances. Wow. I have circumstances. I am not my circumstances. Definitely. Most of our experiences of life is my circumstances have me. Mm. People are people are being run by their circumstances. Definitely. They don't have their circumstances. Their circumstances have them. And that distance, that space, I was just like, oh my gosh, like where have I been? It was almost like, oh, I'm back. It was like I recovered myself, like a part of myself. I'm like, oh, there I, there I was. I was there the whole time. And because of that, it reminded me of very the, the, the very importance of well-being and practicing well-being for myself mm -hmm. and introducing all the things that provide me with a sense of well-being. Because you know what? Success is tomorrow. Happiness is tomorrow. All of that is tomorrow. But well-being can happen today, and it's actually in my power. So I started doing the things that provided me with a sense of well-being mm. and started to do the things that I felt like were in integrity with who I am, like authentic and in, in integrity. And my decision was, or my, not even my decision, but the game that I decided to play was, is it possible to build a meaningful and purposeful life with the foundation of well-being and integrity? Because I found that for during that the, the the journey of real estate and investing and creating helping people create wealth, that's what my motivation was. I'm going to help people change their lives, but helping them create wealth so they have long term wealth, they have financial freedom in the future. And I was so focused on all on that. And what I noticed everywhere with the people that I worked with and the people I was surrounded by is, let's be successful, but at the cost of the things that make me feel alive. Yeah. At the price of my well-being, my relationships, the joy, the love, my hobbies, my passions. At the cost of that. Let me put that aside. Let it die even. Mm -hmm. Let it wither as I pursue my success. So now I was like, okay, what happens if I can... Is it possible to achieve growth and success in harmony with I have a high level of well-being? And I have a high level of integrity. Can I, is that possible? That's the game I started playing. And that's when it started to kind of move up. Wow. Elevate. That's really cool. So you started doing that. You know, there's two minutes left on the thing. So I'm just going <laughs> to. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop the. You can stop that. Facebook. Want. That's been a Facebook live. Make sure guys to tune in to Colin's process. 
on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Google Play, and soon to be on Spotify. Make sure to tune in. Lots of great episodes. And for the rest of this episode, peace, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Say bye, brother. Peace. Right. Good timing. Really good timing. Man. So So that's when you started playing that game. Um So was it possible? <laughs> Cuz so many people like what you're describing is the grind. You're describing the hustle. That's that's what people do. They grind and they hustle and they put everything else to the side. And they just completely focus on whatever it is that their future self, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, so then, what, like, how, what did you find in playing that game? Well, <laughs> you know, I feel there's so there's something that I think it's so important. I I work with clients, and I remember this this one conversation, and this this person was just a, such a beautiful person, generous heart wants to just wants to make an impact on people's lives through the work that she does um, and she wanted my support and as we were going through like an initial conversation like a mm -hmm. discovery session for coaching yeah it was always like oh yeah I, but i know that i know that i know that i know that everything that we were uncovering mm -hmm. and what i made clearer for her was you know it but are you living it mm. do you experience it in your life are you applying it in your life and that's the separate, like, that's the distinction that we all need to be aware of. It's like, you might know something, like, they're both called knowing, but one kind of knowing is very intellectual, and the other kind of knowing is from direct experience. Like, you are living it. Yeah. And if you, are, if you don't live it, then you don't really know it. You just heard it or read it or saw it. Yeah. And so, for me, I've heard, and I've learned, and I've in intellectualized take care of yourself, you know, wake up early, have a morning routine, do the things that provide uh, a sense of well-being. Even my coach before all this happened, he used to say that to me. And so now it was like the real experiment, like, let's see what happens. And I wanted to have a direct experience. Like, this is an experiment. I'm going to see for myself what is possible if I commit to this. And so well-being is, it's whatever whatever creates that sense of aliveness for you right now. Mm. And it's the things that provide you with that sense of joy, the sense of vitality, the sense of health right now, love, being self-expressed right now, not tomorrow. So it starts very simple. You might be like, okay, got to make my bed. Go for a walk, journal, read for a little bit, learn something new, uh, practice yoga, go work out, what, whatever. It's anything that you want. And so I had, a, I have a checklist that I use and I have a checklist that I give to my clients. It's just a list of 10 things and you score yourself. So if you do six things today, you have a 60% well-being score today. If you average it out, oh, my average well-being last week was 55%. And you just start, start tracking it and just start seeing, you know, there's a saying, if you want it measured, sorry, if you want to, if you want to manage it, you have to measure it. Right. If you mm -hmm. want to improve it, you got to measure it. Definitely. So you start. I started tracking it, and so it was very challenging in the beginning because my self worth was very low at that point. It was very like I felt horrible for what I had done. Um, you know, like the opportunities that I've taken away from the people around me mm. because of closing down the business is immense, and that's a huge burden. Right, it's very selfish to stop that flow of income and possibility. Feels that way, definitely. Yeah. For sure. So. I was beating myself up a little bit, but practicing over and over and over again, day after day, week after week, these very simple, tiny things, I started to get the sense like, oh, like, even though my circumstances haven't changed, like, remember, like, there's a separation. I'm not my circumstances, even though my circumstances haven't changed. Yeah. There's this new sense of like being resourceful, yeah. like being energized. Like I can serve from a place of my circumstances tell me I have nothing, that I am nothing, mm. which was very powerful for me. And the integrity piece was being very, very aware of all the areas where I have messes and doing my very best to complete those messes, to take care of those messes, to have a handle on some of those messes, 
conversations I need to have, have piles of things that I had to, that I had to sort out, um, things that were just kind of like loops that needed to be closed. Start to take care of those things, which is just, uh, you know, just becoming more responsible, mm-hmm. really, right? And very slowly, I started to see that I felt very different. I was able to find natural appreciation, not effort, right? There was, I'm going to try to think of what I'm grateful for. Um, But then there was a natural like being in awe, savoring, you know, relishing and just being like, oh, this is just exquisite. Just the (laughs) beauty of sipping this espresso was so like, Mm. like a gift. It felt like every moment began to feel like a gift. Not every, but like more and more, these tiny moments would feel like a gift. You become more aware. Yeah. Appreciative. Mm -hmm. And then I get opportunities coming so i like i said i had my real estate license yeah but f- during the time of my business that was only for those investment properties i never would help anybody who said let me sell my house or i want to buy my my family home mm-hmm. whatever like never never would i do that it was always if it pro- created income if it created a return yeah. then that's what we're, i will work with you as a realtor on that um so i got an opportunity hey oliver my daughter wants to buy a house I'm like, okay, let's let's look at it. And I had no calls before this for months. Nothing. No opportunities like this came up. And it was like super straightforward, super simple. And, you know, the the, the deal provided me with like a twenty five thousand dollar commission. Like just like this. Like within like this. Like within a day. Wow. Um, and then they're like, Oh, we need to like we need to sell our house now. I'm like, okay, well that provided with like a I think it was like a maybe sixteen or eighteen thousand dollar commission, yeah, yeah. just like that. And then another friend, oh, my parents want to sell their house, and I, I literally, I, I created, I sold enough properties within four weeks, and this has not happened. This, I feel like we're gonna, you know, we have to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly that alarm. what that alarm yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I never had opportunities come like this and even when i was doing the investment properties nothing like this had ever happened Mm -hmm. within a short period of maybe four weeks i had accumulated about fifty thousand dollars worth of commissions that were coming to me wow that's a very short period of time and that's never happened in my business uh in in, up until that point Mm -hmm. and so because it takes time to get paid on that stuff i'm just like still broke i'm still kind of like right Nothing has circumstances haven't really changed except these opportunities and payments are going to come. Um, so I started to see like, oh, wow, like if I did not take care of myself, would this have happened? Yeah. And would I have been able to show up mm. if I didn't have high well-being, high integrity? Would I be able to serve these people or would I be so self-indulgent in my sadness, my grief, my depression that I wouldn't have been able to show up. I have no idea. I don't know. But I know that over the years, and that was 2012. So over the years, with my own life, with my clients' lives, there seems to be a direct correlation. um, Higher the well-being, there's maybe a little bit of a buffer effect, and it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Higher the well-being, higher the results. Higher the performance. Higher the integrity, higher the results. So like there's... Uh, a saying that my coach ga- ga- gave to me and he says if you're not getting the results you want check your integrity mm. and there's so many moments that i can say directly i increase my level of integrity my commitment to my integrity and immediately sometimes within 24 hours the results that haven't been happening for weeks or months they start showing up really that's direct experience hmm that that does make sense. You know what? I'm actually gonna, <laughs> cause that that makes, huh? Like yeah, yeah. I understand that completely. And the thing about integrity is, it's not a theory. Like it's not something nice to have. It's true workability. Yeah, I was actually just looking up if, the meaning. If of your that. wheel is missing spokes, the wheel will still turn. But its workability decreases because of the integrity has decreased. Yeah. If you have full integrity and you have all the spokes of the wheel, it'll perform the way it's supposed to perform. As a human being, integrity is just, it's not about ethics or good or bad, moral. That's, an, that's another conversation. It's mm-hmm. not appropriate to, for this, but it's wholeness, completeness, sincerity, honesty, unbrokenness. That's what it is. Yeah. So if you have things like, 
oh, I have to return this to the store. I have this bill that I've like I've had to pay. I have this relationship I've, I have to end. I have um, like I have to quit this job because it's because it's killing my soul. I have to fix this thing in my car. Like yeah. it could be very tiny things. The holes in my sock. I shouldn't be wearing socks with holes in it. Get new socks, right? Like very yeah. tiny things. It's what makes you feel whole. And find out the things that that are not whole, that are broken, that are incomplete, and work on those. Get straight away. I did. I did everything you just named. Like, ex- actually, yeah, even the relationship. Like, not not my relationship with my girlfriend, but yeah, there's relationships I have to end, bills that I have to pay, like all those things. And as I and as I like resolved to like, okay, I'm gonna start dealing with these. Like like you said, creditors. Like I was like, okay, when they call, I'm gonna answer and I'm gonna deal with it. And like when I started doing that, it got a lot better. And like I've paid off like a couple of them since then. And like, cause I've only, I took this up like maybe four months ago, just as I was moving out of uh, another situation I was in. Ended a relationship with uh, someone I thought was like a really good friend. And like, I just, I just started actually, I guess, you know, heightening my integrity, I guess. And yeah, everything changed. Everything got better. Like I felt better and then everything else got better. And then the results started happening for me. And like you said, there's a buffer period. So it's like the results got better. I'm still here. I'm still in like this certain place, but like everything is feeling a lot better and different opportunities are now opening up as I start to like do that. So that's so true. Right down to the socks. I do that exact same. I did that just the other day. I was like, this has a hole. As soon as I found the hole, I just rip it apart. I'm like, okay, out of there. Rip it apart. Okay, out of here. Rip it apart. Out of here. And literally went and got new socks. I'm like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's the thing, right? Like so many of us think that it's the, the big milestones, the glamorous ones, the ones that can create praise and recognition that's the important one that's the one we gotta we gotta prepare for that we gotta make sure yeah. we show up for that yeah but <laughs> preparing for that means you're taking care of the tiniest subtlest seemingly mundane things mm. that's how it's an expression of how you live your life yeah the fact that you take care of oh i'm gonna put this back to where it belongs yeah like as simple as that yeah. oh i took this off okay let me put it where it belongs closet dresser laundry like super simple yeah there's a sense of like i'm taking care of myself like i'm taking care of things i'm being responsible i'm owning it and i'm thinking about my future self that's that's yeah that's exactly what i've been doing like right down to the yeah even to the clothes everything that's why i have my closet set up like that i like i cleaned it all up and I, you know what I usually do when I see something that's like out of order? Um, I'll be like, and I always think of like Jordan Peterson. I'll be like, what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be the kind of person that walks by the sock that's on the ground? Or do you want to be the kind of person that picks it up? I literally just think that. I'm like, okay, I want to be the person that picks it up. Because that sock right? turns into what? <laughs> it turns into a pile. To right? a pile. Like really easily. And then, and then somebody comes over and then they're like, what is this? <laughs> you know and then you look that way even though you don't feel that way you look that way now and now it's just like it's it's just like a snowball effect almost mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you start to low when you start i guess when you start actually lowering yourself in that sense then somebody else sees it then the actual lowering takes form because now somebody is actually seeing it and now they see you like that so then it becomes actual whereas before it was like just a sock and and it's and it's so simple. Some something as simple as I put my socks away. It's like, and it's not like we understand this intellectually, but we get it instinctively or intuitively. Mm-hmm. I can trust Colin. <laughs> he said he's gonna be here on, at this time. I don't have to. I don't have to confirm. Like he's gonna be there. Yeah. There's just something about those people. And and if you're listening, I know you can probably think of one or two people. Where you say, or they say, I'm going to be there at four. And you're like, yeah, you know what? They're not going to be here at four. <laughs> like, you know. I used to be that person. I, I, yeah, I used to, I, like, I always used to be late and stuff, and I didn't like it. I started realizing. I remember somebody, I forget where I heard it, but it was like, somebody said, when you're late, you're disrespecting uh, that person's time. You're showing them that you feel that your time is more important than theirs. 
And when I thought of that, because I was always late with my friends, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like that about my friends. I'm like, yeah. maybe I shouldn't do that. And then I just started becoming like more of a more more of a punctual person. Mm-hmm. And it just yeah, it spreads. It spreads. Like I don't know if you listen to like Jordan Peterson, his like lectures and stuff like yeah. that. But like he talks a lot about that, about like being that person that you know you should be, that you could be if you just did some things that you knew you shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. So. I, I just started doing that and yeah you're so right the results really stepped up and next thing you know you got whiteboards with your passions and your talents and you just got a to-do list you got like all this stuff it's weird it's your weird. i think that your level of self-worth begins to grow because it's like i matter enough that i will honor what i promised and if i don't fulfill my promise i will still I will still own the fact that it didn't honor my promise. Yeah. And if there's anything that I need to take care of and clean up and handle because of the consequences of not keeping my promise, I will own that as well. Because everything I do has a ripple effect. Uh, That level of connection with the consequences, like I see, and you're kind of seeing beyond just yourself and you're seeing just beyond this moment. You're like, oh, if I'm late... What what is that? What how does that impact the people who I'm late for? Mm. Oh well, the, now they're twiddling their thumbs, and now they're like agitated, and now their plans are behind, and the, now they're taking up a table, so the next person who wants to come into the restaurant can't sit there. They're like it's going to mm. delay them even more, and the person serving them is coming back and checking every two minutes when they should be serving other tables, but you're not there at the table yet, so they're just kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Like you want more water? You want to top up your water? Like, <laughs> you know, so like you can see there's a there's a profound ripple effect that happens. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and who knows how far that goes, right? Like, well, talk, it keeps going. They talk about like the butterfly and then the tornado that happens. Yeah, butterfly flaps its wings. Butterfly effect, I think it's called. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so it's very true. Very true. I like that a lot. And you know what? You're so right because like when I started um, waking up at four a.m. I, well, it started at 6 or 7 a.m. And then I got to 6 and the 5 and the 4. But when I started getting up at 4 and the first thing I would do is shower, then I would stretch, um, then I would read for an hour, then I'd go meditate, um, and then I'd say my affirmations, and then I'd go for a morning walk. And when I started doing all this, my self-worth went up a lot, like a lot, because I was like, I take this time with myself and then automatically I started looking at the relationships I had, which is why I said like I ended that relationship that I had with somebody because I realized I'm like, OK, they, they don't actually value me the way I know I should be valued. And then I started seeing the people that actually do value me that way. And then like I was like, OK, I, I should distance myself from this. Mm-hmm. I should bring this closer. When I say bring this closer, I was talking about my girlfriend because she was like like she's like the person that like believes in me and like really really has helped me like more than more than anybody and and my buddy mike so i was like those two are amazing and like these other people are not and i'm like like maybe i should just distance myself and like start focusing on what matters you know it it was it's very weird the correlation between just waking up early taking care of myself and then like realizing what relationships i should and shouldn't have in my life well yeah and i think when it's only when it's strictly mechanical or strategic it really misses the context behind it like mm. like what is actually happening in the background that makes it so effective and so empowering yeah. it's because you know so many if you want more information it's out there you can read about it you can google it if you want a strategy of how to grow your business if you to to lose weight to be happier, to be healthier. Like you can read about it. You can learn about it again. Like that's intellectual. Yeah. But if you don't have the experience of, wow, I act and live like I matter. Yeah. Like I'm worth something. You know, why do you think people drop their diet? Why do you think people drop their new habits? Why do you think people fail in making something, you know, making something new happen in their life in any realm, any realm, they snap right back to old ways. Because there's a level of self worth that says this is what you deserve. Yeah. This is what you deserve, and you're not again. That's not happening intellectually. Mm. That's at your soul level. That's at your gut level. 
Like, ba- you know who you are and what you've done in the past. And it's just kind of all embedded there. And you know what you're not taking care of. <laughs> and so you might try to to try to create results that in spite of that lower self-worth, but it will always come crashing down to that gut level of, yeah, well, I know that this is how I feel about myself. So there's no way this, this sense of joy and appreciation, gratitude can last that long. So it snaps right back. Wow. It's crazy that you say that because – and. I'll go back to like my girlfriend. I, 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 I almost did that exact thing that you're saying. Um, I've always, I've had like a bunch of bad relationships. Got cheated on a bunch of times. Just, just didn't work out these really other relationships. And then I met my girlfriend. And, um, I, I almost did that exact same thing where I was like, I almost feel, felt like I didn't deserve this, this good relationship. I was like, this can't last. This can't be real. I didn't even trust her. I was like, there was a period of time where she wanted to be with me and I was like, no, because I'm like, I, I know how this is going to end. And she's just like, she's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I almost I almost fell back into that trap. And even even just recently we were talking about it. And she's like, you have to think of like she you have to think of like everything you've been doing for yourself. You have to think of it like now you deserve good things. And she's like, you should think about it. Uh, think about it that way rather than thinking about it like you're going to lose me or like all the good stuff you have going on in your life right now. She's like you have to think of it like you've you've worked for it. You're treating it like 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 you matter. Yes. And uh yeah, it's been such a such a game changer to start thinking like that. And it just it feels so much better. But yeah, you're 100% right. You snap right back to old ways unconsciously, like self-sabotage. Yeah, un- really? cuz unconscious is gravity. Mm. You don't need any effort. You already know it. It's already familiar. It already has a thrust. Already has a momentum, a velocity. So you're just gonna. It's gonna. It's just automatic. Yeah. It just like that's the default. Mm. You have, we have to work constantly to to go in a new direction. Yeah. You know, there's that Chinese proverb: if you don't change direction, you'll end up where you're headed. Like, and where you're headed, there's so much behind it. You're already going there. And it's yeah. years and years and years of momentum in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And actually, you know what? When you actually mentioned diets as well, I remember hearing something. I feel like it was Rhonda Patrick. It was probably, like, on Rogan or something. But she was talking about your gut binome and how, like, if you fill it with shitty flora, shitty bacteria by eating bad food, um, your body will naturally want that like you'll try and eat clean but your body's just like bring back that other garbage well that's the sock right (laughs) you leave the sock in the room and what does that turn into it turns into a pile yeah right you know have you heard of broken window theory no you know the home with the broken window if, if you leave that window broken the theory is it'll attract more graffiti and more destruction because it's just like the fact that it doesn't have the integrity there wow so it's like it's more likely to get more damage so it's so simple and then you eat that you eat that garbage your your gut bacteria is all becoming the kinds of bacteria that craves that garbage yeah and so now all of a sudden you just start eating more and it multiplies and it Mm. multiplies and the craving for it multiplies constantly yeah and you got to suffocate that yeah yeah. like you have to let that die the broken window theory yeah never heard that that's so true though that's mm-hmm. exactly what happens if you see a, yeah especially like as kids like if you see a house that's all messed up you're like you're just likely that let's can we go in there <laughs> let's check i think we can and then we go in and then like you cause havoc yeah that's yeah so true wow and then to think about that broken window theory towards yourself as a person yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense jeez man I like these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, seriously. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's touch on. Um, I wanna, I want, I want this to be beneficial for people. Like I said, like I was once that guy working in a warehouse, um, not knowing how to change myself. And since you've actually worked with so many clients. What are the, what's the one thing that you see holding people back the most that from changing themselves, reinventing themselves? 
I think self worth is an important one. Yeah, definitely. Because you're kind of you're working on top of the fact that your self worth actually doesn't support who you see yourself becoming. Mm. Like it doesn't it doesn't even line up. Yeah. Um. So I think if if that if that's overlooked, then any external strategy, it's not going to last. It'll be a start and stop, start and stop. Mm. And I think we we really need to have more and more conversations about what does it how how do you develop self-worth and what is diminishing the self-worth and what is lifting the self-worth up and you can look at your environment right yeah if i'm with this group of people in this work environment and my house my house it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive what house what job like you have to look around and just what's so important in the coaching is you have to be able to see things as they really are. You have to be with what is and what isn't. Yeah. Cause most people are so attached. They look at their life. They look at their circumstances, their situation. Oh, it should be this way. It shouldn't be the way that it is. It should be another way that I know it should, it should be that way. They look at their past and their upbringing and their childhood and their teachers and their friends and the people who broke their hearts, whatever they should have been that way. Mm. I should have had this kind of, childhood it shouldn't have been the way that it was yeah and that level of that's incomplete like you cannot be complete with that inability to see things as they are mm-hmm. so i think if you want to if you want to so one of the simplest things is i have i had this one client and she's working out twice a day and she's a parent and she has kids she has a full-time job and she's working her butt off constantly wow and she's fighting something, right? Mm. She's racing towards something. And she wants her body to be a certain way. And But it's coming from this place of my body's not doing what it's supposed to. It's not getting the results that it was. Like, like it's just pure resistance. Mm. And the conversation was about can you be with your body the way it is? And the way that it isn't. Like moment to moment to moment, can you be with it the way that it is? Not like it's okay, like I'm not going to change anything, like I'm not going to do anything, but here's my body today. Can you be with that? That's reality. That's the reality. No imagination, no illusion, Mm. no should be or shouldn't be. And that's like, that's so conceptual. It's very hard to understand what the hell that means. But it's almost like you can surrender and accept, oh, I have to like the reality is my knee I have a knee issue today this moment yeah for now eventually that'll change right now I have a back issue right now you know like I'm tired yeah. like can you just be with your body the way it is and so that conversation was okay just check in with yourself notice your body forget about what you were able to do yesterday or last week or what you think you should be able to do based on how hard you're working accept where you are like be where exactly where you are. And that's the only way that you can work. If you want to adopt new habits, new mindsets, if you want to change something about your life and about yourself, you have to look, I, I put your, your address in Google maps. Yeah. If Google maps didn't tell me where I was, I would not get here. <laughs> right. Yeah. True. So yet everybody is so focused on where they want to be. I want to go to this destination and this address. And that's all they're focused on. Mm. But but try that with Google Maps. Mm. Only have the destination, but your phone doesn't know where you are. Useless. Useless. Wow. Doesn't make a difference. <laughs> if you are not where you are, if you don't know where you are, if you can't be where you are, you will not know what the appropriate next step is to get closer to your destination. You won't know the appropriate next step command or direction or action to get closer to your destination the gps said keep going just keep going don't worry 401 you're all right and then it'll say hey two kilometers two kilometers you gotta you gotta go north on the 400 yeah like hey one kilometer so it's constantly reminding you that's so true right before you're supposed to make the turn so be exactly where you are yeah and then from there, you can be appropriate to where you are and get closer to where you want to be. So if you say, hey, my, I have an injured knee. Like I have a friend of mine who runs like you and he's like, I have an injured knee. So 
I've been practicing yoga every day because it doesn't agitate. There's no impact. I've been doing yoga. That's like that's someone who's being where he is. Yeah. He's not like my knee should be another way. It like it shouldn't be this way. Why is life doing this to me? Why is this happening to me? Pure resistance, incomplete. Yep. Keep going. And no power, <laughs> no power. But he says, well, you know what? This is where my body's at. What could I do? Okay, I will do yoga. There's no impact. Okay, yeah. I will do acupuncture. Okay, I will do physio. Like he's being exactly where he is. Yeah. Most of the time, we're trying to act in spite of where we are. Doesn't work. Mm. Can't change. You can't transform. Because now, Spider-Man. now it's just you're working on top. Mm. It's like if I if I w- came in here and I wore a T-shirt that showed muscles, like in those <laughs> beach shirts. Does yeah. that mean I have muscles? <laughs> like you're just covering things up. Like it's nonsense. <laughs> it's amazing let it out man (laughs) (laughs) that's so yeah that's so true you have to see things as they are yeah definitely that's uh, yeah i've done that many times in life i well i've actually done that recently and just to look at like where they are that's why i wrote down all that stuff that i have there and like just to see things like as they are like what is my actual situation like and the, yeah, and the, the practical reality is you might want to achieve some very important things. And everyone has important projects, health, relationship, love, career, money, family, all this stuff. And if you can be with where you are, you might notice, you know what? Like, I have a freaking ridiculously messy house. <laughs> like, if you watch Tidying Up on Netflix... I had with Marie my, Kondo. My girlfriend oh wants my to God. watch that so bad. You can see the difference in people's eyes and their energy when things are just lifted from their home, mm. like released from their home. All the things that they've been hoarding and holding on to. It's like, how will you improve uh, yourself, your relationships, your work? How will you grow? How will you expand? How will you reinvent or transform? If If you look at things the way they are, there's all these messes that are in the way. And those are actually at the forefront. Those are so much, they're so much more present. They're so much more in arm's length. Like you could actually do something about it. Yeah. And if you can't, like Jordan Peterson talks about it all the time. He's like, look at the, like do the things that are like screaming at you. Take care of the things that are already within your grasp to take care of. It's very obvious what those things are. You know what they are. You just think, okay, what messes are in my life? What things am I avoiding? Start with the first one. All right, there's a pile of papers. Take one piece of paper and just start. Okay, do I shred this? Do I pay this? Do I file it here? Like you just just start. And you'll and you'll start to find that because all of those things that have been weighing on you. It's like you're carrying all that freaking nonsense with you everywhere thinking that you can work on top of that yeah. and transform on top of that. You got to clear it. It's like you're at the buffet and you're eating all this, like you pile up all this food on the buffet and nonstop, you're only looking at the hot table and there's a f- plate of food on your table. <laughs> and you're like always obsessed. Oh, what's, what am I missing? What's over there? I didn't go to that, that table. I didn't try that. <laughs> like there's all these kinds of cuisines and you're not even looking at the plate. Of, like you have to either give the plate to the server or you got to eat what's on the plate. You have to have an empty plate. You got you to gotta give it up. Wow. You got to clear it out. And then now you can go back to the buffet and and try something new. So if you have these disasters in your life, right? Like we were talking about, um, you know, if there's certain people in your life, do they support who you want to become? Or are they just a reflection of the past? Mm. Your workplace, the conversation, the quality of the words, the quality of the mindset. Do they support who you want to become? Or are they a reflection of the past? Mm. It's very simple. If you want authenticity, you look at where you're being inauthentic. Look straight at the thing that is a reflection of the opposite. You use Google Maps because you want to know when you need to take a U-turn. If you're going the wrong way, immediately it says, hey, you got to turn around. Yeah. And most of us don't think about that. We don't think, oh, this thing is actually taking me to that default. I call it, you know, like Jordan Peterson really talks about the importance of a counter vision. Yeah. Having an anti-vision, having a hell yeah what does life look like if the worst parts of me took over my life where does my life end up one two three four five years from now if you get very intimate to the very subtle details all the little twists and turns that lead you to that hell if you get intimate and have 
uh, a clear relationship of what those things are, you'll know when you're making the wrong turn. Yeah. It's so important. So if, if you look at, oh, I'm hanging out with this person and they're killing my soul. I'm doing this job and it's depleting my soul. If you have an increased sensitivity because you've designed that vision of hell for you, the counter vision, yeah. like it's not enough to have a beautiful vision. Know what the exact opposite is and what leads you there. So when you're like, oh, this person, oh, this situation, oh, I can't be in these kinds of situations. Yeah. These take me to hell. These take yeah. the, and, and it's not even taking you there. You're already in it. Like you're already tasting it. You're already feeling it. Because mm. then you go back to your partner, your girlfriend. And you're like, oh, I can't believe this person. The freaking nonsense that this person's up to, and all the cra- and now you've just multiplied it. Now yeah. you've just spread the, the 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 hell. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that is so true. It's funny you bring that up. Uh, the last person I interviewed, uh, he was into psychology and philosophy, and he actually had uh, Jordan Peterson was his psychologist for a few few years, and um, he was talking about how people actually are more likely to succeed or more likely to create good habits. I believe it was if they do that exact heaven and hell, like the way you visualize good things, you're supposed to like take a uh, time also to visualize exactly what you said. What would happen? Yes. If like, I just messed everything up, you're not supposed to take too much time. Cause you don't want to like put that into your mind kind of thing. But like, you should always know exactly what that would look like in that way um i think jordan peterson says a little bit of heaven a little bit of hell it's something to strive to and something to keep you going yeah it's like you need something you know i I remember um just the analogy of racing towards the gold at the end of the rainbow Mm. but this adds the there's a vicious dog at your ass yeah yeah right so you have to run (laughs) like do you you need both and it creates a it creates enough enough tension, enough clarity, enough direction that it can it can spur you into action. Yeah. So if if you're like, hey Definitely. Oliver, how do I change my life? Okay, well, what one of the most important exercises that I do with people is where do where does your life end up if you keep doing the things that you're doing? Okay, you're sacrificing well being. Okay, you're neglecting your kids. You're neglecting your your health. You're neglecting your family relationships. Mm-hmm. You're not taking care of your messes. You're living inauthentically. You're constantly mentally agitated. You're out of integrity. All this stuff. You keep going the way you're going. Where are you two years from now? Mm. How does it end up? Like, get really clear with me. I'll be miserable. Life will be worse. I'll lose my friends. I'll lose my family. I'll lose myself. I would, you know, I'd be, dep- I'd be m- more depressed. I'd be f- f- deeper than where I am right now. And not like deeper in the hole, like deeper in like the crap yeah essentially yeah yeah, yeah. okay and, and tell me about what what do you need to do to keep to 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 go in that direction it's like well i just keep doing what i'm doing and mm-hmm. if you don't you know there's that saying if the pain of change has to be less than the pain of staying the same mm-hmm. and most people overlook the pain of staying the same but doing this kind of exercise you could be like oh wow who i am right now and how i'm being it's taking me in this direction and that doesn't just cost me. It costs the people around me and it costs the people I could be affecting in the future if I were to transform my life, if yeah. I were to reinvent who I am, if I change direction. There's a huge cost and you experience that cost and you'll realize, oh my gosh. Like the, the, the quickest example that comes up is one of my clients, she comes to me and she says in a session, I just got my results. My stress levels are through the roof. My naturopathic doctor says I need to take a leave of absence from my job. And I'm like, wow, that seems pretty urgent. Mm-hmm. Pretty urgent. Are you going to do it? I'm like, yeah, I am. She did. But what I, what I asked her in that session was, okay, le- let's rewind. If I asked you a week ago, what's the level of pain that you're in? Mm-hmm. And she said, probably a six out of 10. And I said, if you look at the results, the facts, what is, right? See things as they really are. What is? She's like, it's a 12, 12 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Spurred her into action. But most of us, we learn to tolerate our own nonsense. We learn to tolerate our own inauthenticity. We learn to be, to normalize and desensitize ourselves to the messes and out of integrity behavior in our life and out of integrity people and environments in our life. We tolerate it. We just have this greater capacity to, to be with it. Mm -hmm. 
So we might think that's a six. It's only costing me a six out of 10. But then when you really get clear, when you really sit with it and you can see things as they really are, you'll realize that's a 12 out of 10. What the fuck am I doing with my life? And with this person, with this situation, with, with this workplace, with this habit, why am I doing that? Man. Yeah. Man, that's so true. Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking about myself i'm like jesus i gotta I gotta clean it up <laughs> i could be doing things better which i guess we could always be doing things better but like yeah you gotta you gotta take those steps i guess and how, how do you take those steps towards becoming better cleaning up those messes picking up those socks picking up those socks <laughs> <laughs> how do you become better How do you improve yourself? Yeah. I think it's there it it's it's very, very important, like what we're talking about, you know, for people to not try to to intellectualize it. Yeah. But to actually see if anything that we're talking about, they could stand inside the circumstances and the context of their own life and look at their life. And see if any of this applies. Definitely. You have to be able to look at your life and your own circumstances and see if any of this is true for you. Not just because we say it, but see if it's true for you. Because, like, I can give you a step by step. Like, that's not this, that's not, that doesn't help because you're getting it from me. And you, you, like, you're getting it from the outside in. That's a different phenomena than inside out. Mm if you look at your own life and you see how you're being so here's a, here's a simple example i have one, I have one of my clients and he's growing his capacity to handle things to confront the things he's avoiding to be more responsible he's a parent he's an entrepreneur okay. he's successful at it and there's so much growth that he wants to achieve more and and expansion that he wants to achieve yeah. and one of the very very important things that he came up with just recently he says you know what? Just all these sessions that we've been having, like I'm realizing, like oh my gosh, like I totally get it, and I and and but you know I could see that I'm teaching my kid, you know, confront, confront, and take do take a risk, do something new, you know, be vulnerable, be willing to fail, and all this stuff. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm teaching my kids this, but am I living it? Like, am I really living that? Yeah. Because, you know, and, and I reflected back at him, you know, monkey see, monkey do, <laughs> not hear, and then do. Yeah. How do you live your life? Uh, it's like I tell them, you know, stop being on electronics, but I'm self-employed. I'm always on the computer. Yeah, of course. Right? So they see the, how you are living. Well, you know, you know, I'm on the phone when I'm driving. You know, and they see that they see that behavior, what are they going to do when they grow up? They're going to be on their phone when they're driving, Jeez. right? Like s- s- simple things like that. So I said, for the next 7 days, I want you to imagine like your two boys saw your every move. They were with you and watched you all day, all night, 24 hours a day for the next seven days. What would they learn about what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be, uh, you know, to be a business owner? What does it mean to be a father? What does it mean to be in relationship with a woman? What does it mean to, to have an employee? What does it mean to be, you know, when you are interacting with the people who provide you services, the grocery clerk, mm-hmm. to, to, to take care of your health and your well-being? What would they learn from you? So it's just like you got to – the trouble is the things that you already know, like you, the fact that you already know it, it, it doesn't necessarily – you can't change anything about it. Your transformation lives in the realm of you don't know that you don't know the thing. Mm-hmm. Like you have to see it. You have to see the thing that you can't even think. There's You can't even think what it is that you need to be able to think to change your freaking life. Yeah. So if you watch, okay, where, who are you being those seven days? What would they learn from how to be a human being, how to live life? If you become aware of that, you will find out something that you haven't been aware of. Like you didn't know that you didn't know these things about yourself. Yeah. And when you get access to that, then you can make a difference in your life. Then you can make a change. Then you can make a new choice. Because right now, what you know that you know and what you know that you don't know well, how 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 far has that gotten you yeah it hasn't gotten you anywhere 
Mm-hmm. It only gets you so far. Man. Your transformation lives in getting access to that which you don't know that you don't even know. And it comes from awareness. And that's inside out. That's phenomenology. That's what do you see from the inside out. You, from your own point of view, your own perspective, from your direct experience, what can you finally see that you weren't seeing? It's like when I was writing in my journal. I didn't know that I didn't even know that I was living inauthentically. Yeah. I thought, hey, I've, I've wanted this since 18 years old. I'm exactly where I said I'd be. Mm-hmm. We're doing deals. We're growing our portfolio. I'm self-employed. I thought this is this was my path. Yeah. But I didn't know that I didn't know that deep down it was a fucking lie. Yeah. And when I knew that, when I got access to that, then I was able to make a decision. Right now, you don't have choice. Right now, you don't even experience like you you can do any differently because that's the context that you have. And that's I'm I'm doing that one from now on imagine because i always like um my friend keenan uh we were hanging out one day and he was like talking about he's like you know how i cut through the bullshit he's like with myself he's like i always ask myself what would i tell my son to do in like a situation so i feel like he's like dealing with somebody like he doesn't want to go to the gym like what would i tell my son to do go to the gym you're gonna feel good you know let's go go do it you'll come back you'll feel better that you did it you know like just little things like that and i always take that with me but to actually think, because it's a step further, right? Like monkey see, monkey do. If they actually were watching you, your kids, you know, what would they be learning? And if, and, if and you don't have kids. Inter- it goes to the inverse too, like yeah. daughter. So, Because even if you don't, I don't have kids, right? Like, I mean, but like to still imagine if I did, when I do, what are they going to see? Like, what would they learn? And it, it goes from son and daughter, right? Like a daughter would see like what kind of man to be around right and if you're giving a shit example then she's gonna go and find shit examples because she's gonna identify with that more well you know what the the this conversation that we're having is so important because what i want people to get to be very very clear Mm. is that your transformation it only occurs in the moments where you will not get recognition for it yeah when you don't get the opportunity to have praise where no one will see Mm. it happens in who are you being when no one is watching when no one's watching and that's what that's why this exercise is so potent yeah it's because even if you you know you don't report this to anybody you don't tell anybody Mm. that you picked up your socks you don't tell anybody that you paid your bill and no one's clapping for you right yeah no one's gonna like no one's gonna see any of this but the fact that you are doing it behind the scenes it just it's a represent it's it's you're planting the seeds of responsibility yeah of personal power of choice yeah wow that's so true that's so true because uh when it comes to that like like on my instagram i'll always have like my goals my accomplishments and stuff but i usually leave the bill stuff out of it and i don't do it out of shame it's because like they're more important than that you know like it's weird like like i like to post all the goals and accomplishments that i i have and i achieve and even the, the ones that i fail but the ones that are extremely important to me for like building the character that i know i need to build up um, which is getting out of debt and stuff like that I, I keep those ones to myself and like obviously my girlfriend stuff knows like but but yeah i keep those ones to myself because nobody needs i don't need the admiration for that because no. I, I really know that's something i'm supposed to do like losing five pounds in a month or something like yeah show everybody that because like you know they can aspire to that but like those other things like i really know that that needs to to change in myself so i go after it yeah that's so true <laughs> and, I, and i'm gonna make a bet that as the debt goes down the weight goes away oh <laughs> tremendously tremendously it's uh it's 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 night and day like like i've i've talked about it on my vlog and everything um that i have i i stress eat like i i, I will like i'll get stressed and i'll eat like bad stuff it's like uh, like going back to the old kind of like what we were talking about and uh when i'm handling that like when i've, I've been handling it um it, it go it starts to go away it's 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 very odd the way that works and the correlation there um 
yeah yeah it's 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 very weird it and i i kind of had some shame around it before because it was like you're always we always like in in this whole like motivation like inspiration world you you always like want to have that money's not the focus attitude but it's like when i have it i feel better like i feel a lot better <laughs> and when i'm handling things like that like debts and stuff i feel a lot better and like before there was like a little bit of shame to that like oh man like that's your inner not... guidance system telling you yeah yeah i think it tells so. you that's exactly that's a good way of putting it yeah so because i feel much better and i told my girlfriend that she's like yeah you shouldn't be like ashamed of that she's like i feel the same way when i'm like paying off debts and stuff and it's like you should be you feel good about that and yeah so now i feel much better around that whole thing because i've had a lot of shame around money just because growing up not having it and then being in so many situations where you have to do certain things for it and it's just like there's always been like shame and lack around it and like i've been really trying to change that narrative and it starts by paying off the debts paying off the things that i owe to people and to companies and whatever it may be like just getting that in hand and uh i think it's really powerful that you talk about this yeah openly yeah, yeah I, like I'll, that you, you'll even talk about on the podcast like that's yeah yeah it's very vulnerable of you um because i think so many people can relate to that yeah that like like i said we all can like i don't like post it for like a post on instagram but i will talk about it on the podcast because yeah. i know like that 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 will help people more than like seeing like oh i paid off 300 bucks or something like yeah that exactly thing. but yeah actually hearing about it because it is a thing that a lot of people deal with like a lot of people like i, I i've never gotten in debt with like credit cards and stuff <clears throat> but i know a lot of people probably that's probably like the number one thing that people are indebted to um and uh yeah it's it's tough it's really tough to deal with and uh and we all we all build up this weird thing around it kind what like, do you think what do you think it is i don't know man i well the the thing that we build up around it yeah i think it's i think it's shame i think i think from what we see in media and stuff we're taught that we're supposed to have a lot of money and if we don't that's correlated to our self-worth you know it's directly linked to it you know the more money you have the more you're worth mm -hmm. you know like and um i think i think that's a huge problem um because it's you you already talked about self-worth and i mean the whole time you were talking about self-worth money wasn't even in the equation of it you know and that's, well you know what that's money a, magnifies it mm. because you know like i i i work with people from a whole range of like income yeah like income range and it doesn't matter how much more or less you make self-worth is a t is tied to it yeah and it's almost it's magnified the more money that you have and so i feel like you know i really admire the people who are so committed to self-discovery to self-inquiry to uh, to you know self-acceptance and self-love and self-worth because it kind of it heals that it mm. heals it because money is a resource yeah it's a tool Definitely. and we don't you know to identify ourselves with a resource or a tool we make it more than what it actually is you That's know a great way one, of the, one of the simplest things that i like i have uh, like i had a client recently who's like well i'm not creating the results that i want and i'm working really hard and well that's the life of an entrepreneur right like you're gonna do things and, and you feel like you're sending all this value into an abyss like into a yeah. vacuum and you don't know when it, if it's ever going to come back and you kind of have this self-doubt right and uh you know you worry about money you think about money and like when's it gonna when am i gonna make it and all this and i said let me like tell me was there ever a time where you didn't have money like it never eventually just came and showed up Mm. no like obviously because you're standing here like you're here yeah. and i said okay well, tell me what happens when you have no more gas in your car oh, oh well i'll go and fill it up I'm like okay what happens when you have no more toilet paper in your house it's like well, yeah. obviously i go to the store and i'll get go get some toilet paper yeah. and i'm like that's the same thing as money <laughs> as soon as the money runs out just like the gas, just like the toilet paper, when it runs out, you will go and get it. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter where. Just know that you look in your past, right? Don't listen to me. 
Don't believe believe what I say. Look at your own experience. You just went and gone and you you went to get it. Yep. That's Oh, I want to oh, I want to speak to that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> When I first moved out, he was like, I was like, man, I don't want to move out. Um, he was like helping me out big time. And he was just like, he's like, man, he's like, you'll adapt. He's like, you will adapt. I'm like, but I, I, have, I have a car because I have car insurance now and this and that. And like, I don't know if I can do this. He's like, he's like, trust me. He's like, you'll, you'll adapt to the situation. And uh, it was so true. It was like exactly what we said. It was like the car ran out of gas. The car was like the fridge. And like, there's no food in the fridge. And then all of a sudden it's like, you just go and get it. And it's, it's weird the way, the way you attract it. And it's a combination of being open to receiving and also being open to receiving, doing the work. And then all of a sudden it's like the mix of the two brings opportunity. You have to have the space to receive it. Yeah. You really do. Yeah. 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 Like I have this exercise that I did with a client who's uh, in, a, in a similar business where she's looking for clients. She's looking for clients to work with one-on-one -on -one as a coach. And I said, well, look at all the people on your list, right? Like how many people are you working with? She's like, oh, there's like, you know, 10 or 12 people that they're just kind of tire kicking. They're thinking about it. I don't know if they're in or if, or if they're out and they've just been hanging around for a long time. And I'm not clear if they're going to hire me or not. And they're just still, they're taking up all the space. And so that's the conversation we had. It's like, look, they're, they're really taking up space. You don't have the ability to receive. Like mm -hmm. you, you, you're not even open. It's like, it's the same thing. You got to clean your room. Like you got to create the space. So I said, you know what? It's either you go and get them to the point of yes or no. Like you got to just talk to them one by one. Are you yes or no? Are you in? Or are you out? And then you got to start fresh. Right. Like start start a new clean slate yeah. and have open space. Right. OK. I have open space for 10 or 15 or 20 new prospects. It's blank because all this old stuff is complete. What starts happening is because that space is there just naturally, naturally, as like you said, you have to do the work, but you start to fill it. This name start filling up. Yeah. Once the gas tank is empty, there's space. You got to fill it. Yeah. Your fridge is empty. Need space. You got You got to fill it. So it's, it's kind of, it's one of those things where you have to uh, be ready to receive. You have to be ready to allow. And if it is so full with nonsense, you got to clear it. Mm. Otherwise there's no space. It's like, well, I'm, you know, like I keep going on Tinder and, but I'm dating somebody <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, if you're dating somebody who's not the love of your life, then someone who is the love of your life will never get to you because you are shielding them from even being a possibility in your life because you're in a relationship true you clear the slate right you have to cl complete that relationship otherwise the universe says you are not available yeah you know she's waiting or he's waiting but can't deliver it can't deliver because you can't even allow it because you're holding on to the comfort or stability or whatever the predictability yeah. of of already being in this safe relationship that's so true and that's so true to the extent of um i gotta switch this battery that's so true like even to think of like this table i can't keep that table clear for very long i just can't like as soon as it's open to receive i guess you could say <laughs> it, it just fills up with stuff like like it was clear this morning and then all of a sudden it's just filled with all this stuff and it always happens like that it's um it's I feel like it's a, I feel like I, I used to listen to a book back when I first started my self-discovery journey. And uh, the guy who was talking, he had this rule. He said, like, nature abhors a vacuum. Like, yes. And, and, yeah. I, I, I think that was the actual phrase that he used. And uh, he was just talking about how, like, y you, you can't keep something. Like, you have to open things up for it to receive. Because as soon as, and I like I the way you put it more so, because as soon as you open it up, clear it off i should say 
then all of a sudden it's open. The universe You're is an like, invitation. Yeah, exactly. The universe is like, that's available. We can we can put what we need to put there. And I found that with myself as well, that as soon as I literally like I was I was working on a project that I didn't have my heart in whatsoever. Um, I didn't I didn't like the person's um, narrative that they were doing or, or that they were displaying for the project we were in. Um, it, it was making it so it was taking up 40 hours a week of my time and I wasn't getting paid. And if I was, it was like maybe it would be equivalent to like five dollars an hour. Like it was like nothing. <laughs> it was crazy. We'll talk about it off air. <laughs> but um, um, as soon as I got rid of that, as soon as I said, OK, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, and I. I just I opened myself up to more and then all of a sudden I was like oh yeah I have a podcast I'm like why aren't I working on my podcast <laughs> I'm like I had a vlog I'm like why aren't I working on my vlog so all of a sudden it's like I opened up and all of a sudden I had a podcast going my vlog was going again I got a client I got another client and it was like oh yeah like there's a life to be had like when, mm-hmm. you, when you clear out the stuff that doesn't serve you and uh, as I was doing it as I was coming to terms with it all, it was kind of like, uh, I felt like a sense of selfishness, but that tends to come up when you're practicing self care. You, sometimes you'll feel like as you, as, as you first start the practice of self care, you'll feel like you're being selfish. Like, cause I've had to say to friends, like my mornings are for me. Like I'll have friends message me in the morning. I'll be like, don't message me. I'm I'm doing stuff like I have stuff to do. I'm like I'm not free like in the mornings until like 10 a.m. because like I'm doing all my self care stuff, you know. Um, so it's it feels selfish, but it's not. And like you do have to clear out the things that don't serve you. And and even when I say that, like I've had friends like misconstrue that because uh, they'll feel like that's kind of a selfish thing to say, like oh that person has to serve you. But it's like it's it's not it's not that it's not like uh, it's not like a butler kind of thing. Like it's if they're not in line with what you're trying to achieve or the mindset that you're trying to have in life, then it's better to cut that person loose. I guess you could say. (laughs) And you know what? Uh, Just because relationships end doesn't mean. Go ahead. Don't worry. Doesn't mean it was a failure. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that there's no more love there. Yeah. It just means that the relationship is the relationship at this point is no longer on a parallel path. Like mm. it's just it's you know there's a loss, there's grief, and it does suck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's so important that our environment. So like, one of the one of the best examples for me is one day I just got really curious. I don't know what brought me to this, but I found out that there. Are, if have you been to California? Yeah. So you drive down whatever street, you know, I, I don't know where I was. I think I was in like L.A. And there's just huge palm trees lining the streets. And you're like, this is gorgeous, right? <laughs> and you look it up and you find out there's like only one native palm tree to California. One. <laughs> Yet there's mi- thousands, hundreds. I don't know how many species of palm trees there are. I did not know The that. rest of them are imported from other tropical places. Wow. So if you think about it, you take this seed and you put it in the right environment, the right soil, the right nutrients, the right sun, the right climate, the right water, it thrives. You put it in the earth in our backyards? <laughs> like you, you won't even know it was there. You don't even know that you planted it there. 100%. No one will know that you planted it there. Nothing will happen. Yeah. <laughs> right, and if it did in the summer, it would die. Like your environment needs to. You have to put yourself in situations where you thrive, mm. because whatever it is, right? Like, think of every ounce of energy that someone puts in your direction. Yeah, in the words, and their attitude, and their beliefs, and their thoughts, their mindset, all of that. Consider that that is all nurturing certain things inside of you, and it's whatever it nurtures it will multiply that Mm. seed turns into a you know turns into a little sprout 
and you got to fence that sprout so no animals attack it and eat it. You got to water it, make sure it has sun, make sure it's taken care of, make sure it's supported. You keep going, keep going, and it, and it keeps growing. And then all of a sudden, it's so powerful that it's a tree and it doesn't need any support from you. It just naturally takes from the environment. It receives the sun. It wow. receives the water. It receives, receives, receives. And what happens? It bears fruit. Millions and millions of fruit. And it feeds you. And each fruit has the seeds for to plant another plant. To, to continue and continue and continue. So yeah. imagine you put yourself in a work environment, a relationship environment, in a home environment. And whatever conversation that you put yourself in. The quality of your conversation, that counts as your environment. And that is nurturing which seeds? Yeah. Which seeds is it nurturing? And what is it, what is it multiplying in your life? Is it multiplying expansion and growth and purpose and meaning yeah. and love and joy and aliveness? Is it multiplying that? Or is it multiplying hell and misery mm. and, and, and sadness and negativity and dragging you down? What is it multiplying? What, which, what's getting momentum? So we, I think it's, it's so crucial that we just acknowledge, you know, and it's almost healthier. It's healthier for them because it's like, if I'm working on becoming healthy and whole and complete and responsible, and I continue to allow a certain person who sucks everything out of me, who shatters my soul every time I'm with them, it's almost like they don't get that there's a consequence to the way they're being because you still allow them in your life. Yes. But when you clear, when you complete that relationship, it's healthy in a way of just like, well, this person was like really great. Why are they not in a relationship with me anymore? Why do, mm -hmm. they, do they not spend time with me anymore? Yeah. What's going on? Quite, they, they begin to question. Or even if you are bold enough, and I've seen this and I've done this, you are bold enough to say it. Mm. Hey, being with you, my experience of you is I'm shattered and I'm in pieces and it takes me two or three days to recover from being with you. Mm. And we only spent an hour together. And if that happens to me, what do you think? Do you think it's possible that it happens to other people? I was like, fuck, you're right. Yeah. Like, and I, and if I'm really your friend, I have to tell you that. Yeah. Because I can't let you keep going that way. And I can't let you off the hook and I can't let you uh, avoid the consequences because there are consequences when you bring this shit into our conversations <laughs> it's so true i've only done that three well i've only I've, I've done that three times in my life one was recent where i was like i'm i was like i literally said i'm like i'm soured on the experience of you i'm like <laughs> i'm like i just like i can't i'm like i don't i don't want to do this i don't want to be in business with you i don't like i'm just and um <clears throat> and also another friend did the same thing with that friend as well so it was like hopefully they get it more now and then i had to do it with another long time friend where i was like i just i'm like i just don't want to like it was like a breakup I'm you're like, essentially I, I, like i don't want to do this hey <laughs> friend <laughs> fyi i will not water those seeds for you yeah exactly. i'm not going to continue to nurture those seeds yeah exactly that's exactly what it was. It was, uh, and it's tough. But it, like you said, it is. It is good because then they start to to know the things they don't know. Yeah, and then they can start to ask the questions that they need to ask in order to change. And you know, if you don't, and and if you don't do it for you, do it for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Because what does it cost other people, even the people in the future that you don't even know yet? What does it cost them? For you to continue to have this kind of environment. Yeah. Does it prevent you from making an impact on that person's life? Mm. Does it prevent you from making a profound difference in many people's lives? Does it prevent you from being fully present for the people and the things that matter to you? Because if it costs them, maybe that'll motivate you. Maybe you'll realize, oh, wow, I can't bring this stuff home. Yeah. I can't bring this into my relationship. Yeah. I can't bring this into my work. Yeah. Because I'm shattered after being with this person, I perform at a lower level. I can't think clearly. I feel heavy. I can't stop thinking about them and worrying about them. And I can't serve. And I can't contribute. And I can't create. Yeah. And now what happens? Now every human being, like now you are, there is, everyone 
it's important for all of us to feel useful. Like we can, we can uh, make a contribution and you're not useful. You can't make the contribution if you've been dimmed in that way. Yeah. So true. So true. I like the road we're going down here. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to talk about coaching? (laughs) (laughs) This was coaching. Well, I know you wanted to talk about the coaching. This uh, this was like coaching 101. (laughs) You know what? That's that's really, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, man. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's so true. I I, I like, um, like, yeah, I want to talk about coaching, but I do love providing value to the audience. And I just know... I know that if I was working my night shift job in the grocery store that I fucking hated, I hated that job. (laughs) It was so grueling. Um, And I was listening to this. I'd be like, like, this would actually like help me. This would uplift me. So like I, as much as I want to talk about the things that I want to talk about, I love having to have that conversation. And because I know that's going to help somebody and that that's what the goal is. I don't like to like to make it contrived or anything, but like that is what the goal is to like help people who are in those situations that want to get out and don't even know that there's a means to do so. And I think that conversation helps a lot. That's all it takes, right? Yeah. I mean, some people don't know that there's a seed inside of them that needs this kind of nourishment. Yeah. And if you can open up the eyes and the ears and the hearts of people just by even one insight and it nourishes that seed and they awaken to it. They're like, oh, wow, there is something inside of me that wants more. Yeah. That wants more purpose, more meaning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually, I got to that point, actually, my friend Hank. And sorry to cut you off there. Um, yeah, no, no. Uh, my friend Hank actually got me a job at Kudo. It was like a sales job. And I was like, because I wanted to like interact with people more. I felt like that's something that I should do. I didn't know why, but I just felt like I should. And, uh. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get you the sales job. And I'm like, I don't know how to do sales. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, no. He's like, you're going to be great. He's like, you don't even know. He's like, when you talk, people listen. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, I that told you that on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> he was the first person to ever say that to me. And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, he's like, don't worry. I'm going to get you the job. I'm going to get you the job. <laughs> and like, we did everything we had to do, the resume, everything. Like, like he made sure that I got it. And then I worked that job and it did show me. It showed me that there was a seed. I started interacting with people and I was actually really good at it. And like, yeah, it, it, that, that started the ball to like me growing as a person, like, sev- like severely, like that was the first, uh, snowballing effect. And, uh, yeah, I started actually taking what he was saying seriously about like, he's like, he's like, you talk, people listen. He's like, trust me. He's like, he's like, you have people waiting for an, an hour. He's like, they don't do that with anybody else. Thank he's you, like, Hank, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. He's like, they don't do that with other people. He's like, they would get mad and they would leave. He's like, but when you ask them to stay, they stay. He's like, he's like, you don't get it. He's like, there's something there. And so the reverse is true then. There's also, you know, there's people where you might be like, okay, well, I have to acknowledge that this is not the environment or situation I want to be around. Yeah. And the opposite might be true where there's people who are cheering you on. Yeah. Like someone like Hank. Yeah. Definitely. And if you're like, I think it's our responsibility to look at those types of people in our lives and freaking bless them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And just praise them and cheer them on and just be like, please more like give them the feedback that they need, the validation that they need to keep going. So true. Keep doing it. Like if you don't think like that you're, you're making your, you're making an impact, you're making a difference from your attitude, from your energy. Like think again, like you need to keep going in this direction. People, people need that level of support. Yeah. You know, that which you want to become, you have to bless it. That's so true. Bless that which you want to possess. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that actually is very true. I was practicing, um, acknowledgement i've been writing notes of acknowledgement to people who have like impacted me or inspired me and i definitely have to write one to him like 100 percent. because yeah now that i think of it like i just said he was the first person to actually say that type of stuff to me yeah and and i do try to always uh cheer him on like like when you were like coming i actually wanted him to meet you because he it's so funny that like we sit like if if we were both sitting together i would be like he's much more of a coach than i can ever be because like he just has like this natural ability to like get into people and stuff 
So I was like, I wanted them to meet an actual coach and like, like actually talk with them. But like, he's always busy. He has like a lot of school stuff and everything. And he's like deep in school and he's going to be like, I think he might be taking his master's in like counseling. So like he like has all this stuff like mm. in mind and in hand. So I always, I always try to make him a part of whatever I'm doing. I'm like, if you want to learn how to use cameras, I'm like, let me know. I'm like, you can be my camera. Cause he's played a, a role day. in your life. Yeah, definitely. Like a deep one. Big, big, big role. <sighs> Shout out to Hank. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Hank. You need, Man. you know, like that, the opportunity to be a catalyst for people. And like, that's so, so crucial. Yeah. It's so crucial. We have no idea yeah. that the people uh, in our lives are actually affected by the little things that we say. Yeah. So if we are very, you know, we're very mindful, very responsible, very careful. You know, we can be sowing some very powerful seeds or very disempowering seeds. Yeah. You know? And that's also something to be aware of. Because mm-hmm. you never know what you can do by playfully calling someone stupid or, or like anything like that. You it's, can, yeah, like you you remember the small things that people have said. I'm like, why do I still carry that? Like, mm-hmm. And even the big things, right? Like even maybe not big, but small and uplifting. It's like, yeah. oh, that just fueled you. Um, I interviewed someone on my podcast, Drew Dudley, mm-hmm. and he's f- very famous for this TEDx talk that he did yes, um, he about me. lollipop moments. Mm. Did I tell you about that? You told me about him, but you didn't go like deep into it. Yeah, he has this great story. You can find it on, on YouTube. But he has this story about um, uh, someone came up to him and just said, it's like, hey, remember the first time where we, where we met? Like, just want to thank you for it. He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, you know, first day of school, I was really nervous. And, um, like you came up to the, you, you went to your friend and you said, Hey, why don't you give that pretty girl like a lollipop? And like, he was just being like, just being like a friendly guy, like yeah. first day of school. And he was just so nervous, like with the lollipop, like so awkward. He ended up doing it. And now they were like, in, at that point of the story, like they were engaged to be married. So I just, want, she's like, I just want to thank you to, you know, cause he gathered up the courage to do it. And if it wasn't for you, I don't think we would have ever met. And this wouldn't even wow. happen. And the cool thing is, is Drew doesn't remember that <laughs> that's why it's a lollipop moment i think it's I like have seen this talk, you live actually. it's like you live in a way where you're just doing acts of kindness compassion love good you're like you're just spreading the good everywhere yeah and you like people will come up to you and thank you for something you're like you don't even remember it's oh, just who you're yeah. being you're just you're just emanating like love and light and positivity yeah so i, I really I'm, I'm so inspired by that story where it's just like okay that's how that's how subtle this tr- these transformations are it's, so, it's so subtle that it happens in the tiniest of ways that's so true i have a friend who actually has <clears throat> he had that lollipop my buddy mike who uh, had helped me out with like this equipment and stuff like that um he like when i first started when i first wanted to start vlogging i had like this uh, shitty like knockoff gopro and I, I wanted to save up to get one of these before I started vlogging. And I was like, I just got to save the money. You know, I was working like this like grocery store job. So I'm making like maybe 300 bucks a week. And I'm like, I just got to save. This camera's like 2000 bucks at the time. So I'm like, I just got to save up. And uh, he's like, hey, why don't you just start with what you have? You have a camera. He's like, it works. He's like, just use that. And uh, I did. And I started doing it. And I remember like after I saved up and got all this equipment, like this whole transformation happened. I'm like, man, it's so crazy that like you were just like work with what you have. He's like, oh, did I? He's like, yeah, it sounds like something I'd say. Like he didn't even. <laughs> he doesn't even remember. <laughs> he didn't even really remember. He was just like, yeah, it sounds like something I'd say. He's like, that's what you should do. He's like, you should always just work with what you have. And I, and I think for the for the people who are listening, you have to be able to uh, acknowledge that you have to be listening for it mm-hmm. as well. It's yeah, like you're true. You know how. Um, if you worked, you know, if, if you worked in certain industries, yeah, there's a certain language, there's a certain vernacular of in course. that industry. And now all of a sudden you could be at a coffee shop and someone says a word related to it. And you're like, your ears perk up. Yeah. Because it's just there. You're automatically, it's, you don't have to try. Man. You're just automatically listening for those things. That's very true. That's why it's so important that if you can allow yourself to shift what you're listening for, for those these kinds of seeds mm. these kinds of lollipop moments yeah. like, be listening for it you know i remember there was one time i was at, at a coffee shop 
and just a woman was just like hey can i sit beside you and i said sure i'm like yeah no problem and i said how are you like not even like it's like hey how are you like just like there is i just felt different i just felt like being so present and it was almost just the way i said it mm-hmm. i'm like hey how are you like really yeah. wanting to know yeah and she talked to me for 45 minutes about everything <laughs> about everything about the relationship that ended about the career that she's changing about like like tears she's like i can't believe i'm telling all this stuff to a stranger wow but you know like you can just do it in such a tiny way and you know this person came to one of my workshops and she became a client wow um and that was not even <laughs> something that's not what i'm looking for yeah yeah but i'm just like i'm you just become perceptive you you look at the the person who's you're you're paying your bill at the grocery store just pay attention to them for a moment yeah right just like give your like you share this moment and you will never get it back like this this person in front of you is the most important person this is the most important important moment in the entire universe because this is it this is all there is so treat them that way how are you yeah (laughs) you know so true so true I saw a meme once it said uh treat everybody like they have a sign that says I am important yeah. on them. It's uh yeah, it's really true. Really true. Even just doing what you did, that's going to she's she's going to do that for someone else cuz she's going to know like like it's going to it's going to pay forward. I'm sure it has like she's become a client. I'm sure she's learned so much and like done so much. But like those things they snowball those good things. Cuz now I try to do that. Like after after Hank did that for me, I try to do that for other people. I'll try and see things in people that they and because you think that they'll, they know yeah. Like a lot of people like you're like, oh, you have a presence and you think that I would know that because I'm around me all the time. But like, I don't I don't <laughs> know that <laughs> I didn't actually know that. So when someone says that, you're like, oh, wow, I have this. And like people tell you all these different things. And like if you can see something in somebody like it's always great to tell them the good things maybe the bad things depending on the relationship you have with them um but if you see that good thing in them like you should let them know because they probably don't they probably don't see it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like they're they're a lot they're a lot more likely that they don't see it than they do well i I think we're all we're we're all so much more present to and consumed with the things that agitate us that create stress or worry or fear or doubt or Mm -hmm. confusion we're so aware of that um and we can see it clearly we're like hey hey colin like what scares you the most and like what are you stressed out about what are you worried about oh it's right there like you can access it it's at hand <laughs> it's such i but thought if, of it as you right were it's at hand <laughs> but you know the the way the universe works is that who you are as the gift that you are mm. is hidden in the eyes of other people mm. they can see you so much more clearly in your essence like your pure being than you can yeah like you i'm sure you've been in a room and a complete stranger you don't even know walks into the room and something inside of you says that person is a hilarious person why do i feel like (laughs) why do i feel like laughing and smiling as this person comes in even though i don't know anything about them yeah or someone else walks in and you're like wow she's very like she's so nurturing like what a nourishing nurturing human being i don't know who she is but she just walked in and her nourishment and nurturing energy just filled the room. Yeah. That's like, we all experience that for others. Mm. We can see other people as the gift that they are, yeah. but inside our own head, what's at hand for us is the other stuff is mm-hmm. the survival stuff mm. is the defense stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true, man. Ah, oh. do I, do I, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll I'll ask about coaching because you know what I do want to coach, I do want to, and we have a little bit of time. I think like what do we have like like fifteen, 15 minutes, yeah, fifteen twenty. Because it takes you like an hour to get back. About thank you for coming so far as well. Oh no problem, man. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. I was doing like intros and outros that I was recording for the audio episodes, and I was talking about how grateful I am for so many people who have come from like milton and brampton wow. and like all these like far places just to like sit down and like basically give me advice <laughs> basically give me therapy <laughs> well you get to i mean you are you've created an environment for yourself where 
it's all about like learning and gathering information yeah. and like absorbing like and seeing things from different angles like you put you're putting yourself in a very beneficial situation but the fact that you multiply the value by having the podcast mm. it, it's able to not only benefit you but it ripples out to everyone who tunes in like that's the beauty of like what we're doing that's the beauty of technology and that's Definitely. you know use technology in a way that empowers empowers people so yeah like that's uh, that's why it's a, it's a pleasure to be here thank you i'm, so I'm much. very honored thank you so much man um so i guess with coaching it i think i i talked i talked to you about it and i'm pretty sure i shared it in one of my vlogs how like scared i was to actually talk about myself as a coach and actually put myself out there that i want to do something like that um but um yeah i do and i the question isn't how <laughs> oh shit hold on the question isn't how to get started i remember <laughs> when we talked about that you're like don't ask how to get started but like how, but how do you get started <laughs> <laughs> how does that how do you how does how do you how did because you told me you were like you just got on Facebook after you hit that whole that whole story that you told me you just hopped on Facebook and you're like I am offering these services now mm -hmm. and like you just went at it yeah and like is that was that the actual like that's how you started and like from there it was just a go well like I said I did some mentoring before before of that of course, like about yeah. maybe a year year and a half before that moment mm -hmm. so how do you become a coach i think that you can feel intuitively there's a there's a seed inside of you that yearns to support people to guide people yeah like you kind of there's a whisper of it mm -hmm. so you kind of have that sense you don't know exactly what it is and which way it's going to go and how it's going to express us express itself but it's like you can like you can know deep, you know, deep down, if you're going to be a coach or if you're thinking, should I be a coach? You have to tune into yourself deep down and, and think or like, like just feel uh, and listen what it is that the universe is trying to tell you, what your body, what your soul is trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it's all and, and for the clients that I work with who are coaches and coaches that I've trained. Yeah. It kind of just shows up. It shows up like wow, I, f I really feel like I can see what's possible for other people. Yeah. And when I'm with people and I'm speaking to them in a way where I'm only, I'm, o I'm committed to who they can be, that uplifts them, that empowers them. Yeah. And if, you know, if, if there's any ounce of you that resonates with that, then it's likely that you're like you being in a role of, teacher guide coach like it's there yeah definitely. yeah yeah definitely i've definitely felt that and do feel that uh, like i told you it's like it's usually like when i'm helping my friends um because that's like when it comes out the most because like i don't have any clients that i do that with um but yeah it always comes out with like friends where i'm like man i just want to i just want to guide this person and like help this person to become better and i find that with most people that i like encounter that i'll be like man if i can just if this person would just listen to me <laughs> for like six months like because like i could see so much of them like uh yeah yeah so it's a it's a hard thing to I, I'm, I'm about to say it's a hard thing to start doing but i know it's not because i know before i started touching these cameras i was uh uh, night shift worker at a grocery store so <laughs> <laughs> and like now i'm doing all this right so like i know it's all now possible. look at your environment yeah right you just have to like kind of i guess you just kind of how, how does one go from and i kind of know the answer but i, I do want to talk about it for the audience like how does one go from like like you you were you were working you did some mentoring but you weren't in the space of like coaching like where mm -hmm. that was like the thing you did and like how did you how did you make that shift? Not just the initial, like, this is what I do now, but like setting that environment, I guess you could say, like we just touched on here. You have to announce 
you have to declare mm. that you're a coach. True. You know, like everyone knows what the Declaration of Independence is. Of course. And if you go back to that time and you're looking at, looking at these group of individuals who said, we're independent now, by the way. Like we're a separate <laughs> state from from the United Kingdom. You'd be like, what? That's insane. <laughs> like that doesn't, what? Like you're, like you are absolutely crazy. But they made a, they made a declaration mm. of a possibility and they were committed to it and they were actually who they were being. They were coming from that declaration mm. and they lived it out based on that declaration. Mm. At some point, someone declared slavery is wrong. You shouldn't own human beings. Yeah. If you look at the people around them, people would be like, you're crazy. This, we've been, humans have been doing this for thousands of years. What do you mean? Yeah. You like what? Like how? Like that makes no. But someone like a group of people declared that this is wrong yeah. and this shouldn't be. And they all were so committed to that, that they brought that vision forward. If you look at the life that we get to live and all the things that we we're the beneficiaries of all the people who've risked themselves and their lives to make bold, very bold declarations of what was possible for the being of human beings. Mm. And they lived into those possibilities and they worked as if those like those were already here because of, uh, of course it was because like the seed was in them. Hey, independence. Hey, every human being has rights like they were coming from that. And so they enacted it. They expressed it. And then more and more people tuned in to the conversation and are like, you know what? Yeah, that is how it should. That, that is what's what's healthy. That is what's wholesome. That is what's good for all of us. Yeah. People saw it and then they moved it forward. So when it comes to like whatever career, like coaching, you have to, dec- you might not even imagine. You can't even, it seems unthinkable. It seems insane maybe for some people. But you have to declare it. Mm. I declare the possibility of being a life coach, helping people transform their lives. Yeah. Speaking to them, being in conversations that deepen their self-awareness, that guide them towards personal transformation, personal empowerment. I declare that possibility. And then you have to act like yeah. that, you know, like the if someone was following you around day in and day out, are you being a coach? Yeah. Are you being the type of being who <laughs> guides and supports people to self-empowerment, self-transformation, self-growth? Are you being that kind of person? Yeah. If I followed you for seven days, 24 hours a day, is that what I would see? A demonstration of that? An example of that? Yeah. So you have to declare it and then you be it. Mm. You come from that future, that possibility right now and you be it. And then a coach isn't a coach until you have a client. So you have to have a client. Yeah. Right? Just like you need gas in the car when it's empty, just like when the fridge is empty, you have to get food. If you're a client, if you're a coach, client list is empty, you have to get a client. Otherwise, you're not a coach. Yeah. So you find somebody, whether it's for free or donation or paid or whatever, you have to find somebody who's committed enough to do the work so that you can support and guide and do the thing that you're here to do. Yeah. Hmm. That's a. Uh... That's pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty clear and concise, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you have to declare, and then you have to be it. And again, like when we had our conversation on the phone, that, that's exactly that's exactly what I did with all this. It's like I got the equipment, and I was like, this is what I do now. And then I just started doing it. This is who I am now. Yeah. I would take it deeper. Mm. It's not even what I do now. True. Like, this is who I am. Yeah. Now. And yeah. and even though the words maybe never came out of your mouth or were in your head, but that's a declaration. And a declaration is like a space opening. Like we talked about clearing the space. Like yeah. when you make a declaration, you clear a space so that a new possibility can emerge. Exactly. So it can be born. And that's what you did. You said no to who I was. So and create a space for who I could be. And all this began to formulate yeah. around you. Jeez. And now we're here talking. Yeah. Right? That's so true. I was thinking that the other day. I'm like, this is 
pretty weird that I like work <laughs> with cameras every day and like do all this stuff now. I'm like, it's so odd. I'm like, I spend every day like editing something. And I was like, I, cause I can clearly remember when I didn't know how to do it. I can clearly remember when I used to have to go to Hank to update my resume. Cause I had no idea how to use a computer. <laughs> can wait, how many years have you been doing this now? When I had to do that with Hank, I was about 23 and he was like 21. And how old are you now? Uh, 32. 32. Yeah. So in your life right now, are you living a life right now that 10 years ago seems unthinkable? Oh, completely. completely. So that's what we all need to remember. We all need to recover that we are living lives that a previous version of ourselves is unthinkable, unimaginable, impossible. Yeah. And so we have to, as when we recover that, we remember that we have that power right now. Our future, five years from now, 10 years from now, we have to consider that that future from where we stand right now is unthinkable. Yeah. That's it's so impossible. True. That's so true. And if we don't, because, you know, the momentum of success of familiarity of the known oh this is what i'm good at this is what i'm familiar with i know this Mm -hmm. this is my space this is my (laughs) space of i know the answers if you stay there your future won't be the impossible or the unthinkable from this point of view the future will be just a photocopy of this of what already is Mm -hmm. just a photocopy which is fine but if you're into expansion if you're into growth if you're into possibility you have to step into being able to think the unthinkable. Yeah. Be able, being able to do the impossible. It's true. Wow. Uh, man. Let me see. <laughs> I, think, I think we can end it there. We're right at 1230. Beautiful, man. That was a perfect mic drop moment. <laughs> Again, um, thank you so much for being here. Oliver. Oh, I can't say it. Why can't I say it? Come on. M- Masali? Manalese. Manalese. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, just in terms of like what you have going on, let's break that down for everybody. Oh, shoot. Let's make sure you're there. I'm probably just turned off. Um, just uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, what you have going on, websites, social uh, let everybody know where they can find you and yeah. uh, get in touch. Yeah, so you can find my podcast, The Oliver Manalese Show. Yes. The Oliver Manalese Show. <laughs> Jesus. That's going to be a challenge for me. Um, so that's all. That's all, if whatever, wherever you get your podcast, you can find that. Where I interview people, um, different types of leaders about the adversities that they face. Um, so we can get kind of an inside look at how human some of these people are that we put up on a pedestal. Yeah. And, um, how I see it is if we can see that they're just human too, very flawed, if it's possible for them to achieve in spite of the flaws, in spite of them being human, then it's possible for you and me as Definitely. well. So it's very important to have that conversation. Uh, my website's olivermanalise.com. Okay. And that will lead you to the blogs and the, the podcast. And uh, if you're interested in doing one-on-one coaching with me, you can find information about that on the website as well. Um, typically it's, I'm working with people who are entrepreneurs, aspiring or beginning entrepreneurs. And, uh, it seems to me that the people that are attracted to working with me right now, as of this moment are, they are, they've kind of made it quote unquote yeah, in a way they've checked all the boxes, but they realized making it just, it wasn't it. Yeah. It isn't it. Mm. Like there's something missing. And also like, um, people who are looking to step into a new possibility like you got to be able to you know everything that got them to where they are yeah is not getting them to where they want to be okay. and so they work with me to to break through whatever those barriers are cool uh social media instagram is all the same just find my name oliver manalise oliver manalese however you want to pronounce it <laughs> and um i have a workshop coming up i don't know when you're going to be releasing it but reinvention roadmap yeah march 2nd and march 3rd it's a two-day workshop that i do okay uh it breaks down 10 steps to know yourself deeply to grow yourself to a new level 
uh, in a way so that you can make a profound difference, make a, make an impact on the mm -hmm. world around you. True. That's yeah. reinventionroadmap.ca for that. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right, man. Thank you so much for being here. This has been absolute honor. Every time there's every so often I have a guest on that, uh, completely reminds me of why I'm doing this. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those talks. 100%. Thank you so That's much. A huge man. Compliment. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. What a pleasure. All right, guys, this was the process. I'm out. Peace. Man, thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thanks for the opportunity. Jeez. I don't know, this one sounds different. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. That was Oliver Menelaez. Very seductive name. Very interesting conversation. Uh, and I left that conversation just feeling so new. So new. I mean, uh, Oliver really really thinks that I should be a coach myself and uh and I thought so too I still do from time to time but uh I don't know if I want to listen to everybody's problems you know what I mean you know you know what the I and maybe I even said it in the the interview just now but like the real thing about being a coach is watching people not do what you tell them to do that would piss me off like like nothing else if I if I tell you to do something and then you just don't do it because you're just like, nah, and you're like, but let's fix me. I'd be like, oh, fuck this guy. <laughs> but yeah, but Oliver does it and he actually loves it, man. He loves it and he's really good at it. And uh, check him out. Oliver dot com. Let me spell that out for you guys real quick. OK, I'm not going to front like I know how it's spelled right off the bat. I got to go to his Instagram. It is Oliver M as in Mike A N A L E S E Manalays. His podcast is called The Oliver Manalays Show. His website is olivermanalays.com and his Instagram, of course, is Oliver Manalays. Go and check him out. I know he'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much. Like, subscribe, share, rate, review positivity gang only i guess you could be negative too if you really want to but but why 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 waste your time because i'm not going to read it once i see it's negative you know can i delete it hmm. let's look into that i wouldn't though <laughs> <laughs>